Alrighty, hey guys, this is Think Outside the Cube, and here we have the 2016 Lexus ES. It's time for the one-year review of this vehicle. We have had it a little over um, 12 months. We did take delivery of it December 20th of 2015, and um, I felt it was only befitting to film it out here on the lake um, where the first video was filmed of it. But of course, it's a little less scenic considering they did drain the lake. They drain the lake a few times a year just to give the um, waterfront owners a chance to repair their property and such. But coming back to the vehicle, this is a 2016 Lexus ES 350 in atomic silver with the black leather. Specifically, we have done 21,058 miles on the car. That's definitely high miles for one year of ownership, but um, it gets driven a lot and we definitely do appreciate all that it offers us. Now, first of which, of course, we have done quite a bit of service to the vehicle, but just recommended service with 20,000 miles. Now, going for our 20,000 mile service, it was actually recommended to be $320. And that's just oil, fire, tire rotations, filters, and checking the bolts. That was a little BS to me, honestly. Dad didn't buy it either. Um, we ended up just going for some oil since it is synthetic oil that ran us about a hundred dollars and we did get the tires rotated privately dad does have a close friend that owns a tire shop and that's where we get all our um, wheel stuff done so our um, bill there was only about hundred and twenty dollars for oil which really isn't bad um, as long as you build your own maintenance I guess you could say and don't go with the recommended service they don't really um, cost you a whole lot to go to the dealer now, a little hiccup that we did have with Lexus, the company, Lexus Financial, we did finance the vehicle since that did give us another $500 off the asking price. Um, they actually took forever to send us the title for the car. We actually paid it off the second or third month of ownership and um, we never heard anything back. Um, so dad actually reached out to them and we were wondering where the title was. And so they were like, oh, our mistake, our mistake. So they went ahead and put it in the mail and it took forever to get there once again. And so just a little hiccup with the financial services. Um, they just, I guess, weren't expecting the vehicle to be paid off so soon and just didn't have the title ready. Um, remote start is another little hiccup that we've had with the car. In, I, in my six month update with it, I did mention that it didn't have remote start. Of course it does. Um, probably 50 people in the comments corrected me and said that it does. But it's very intermittent when it works. You can be um, keeping one eye open, one eye closed, shaking your foot, wiggling your tongue, and it still won't turn on. Um, it's definitely very weird when it does. Um, it's an older start-stop system as well, so when you go to grab the handle to unlock it, it actually turns the vehicle off, which I think is kind of pointless. Um, adds extra wear and tear to the starter, even though, I mean, that's not that big of a deal. Um, it's just one of those things, it's just antiquated, and it, there's really no excuse for it to still be like that on a $45,000 car like this. Now, we have besides that, we have no problems to report at all. During our one year review of our Nissan Altima that we previously owned, um, we had problems with the wheels, we had problems with it shaking like violently at stoplights, vibrating really badly. Um, it was a good car, but this car has been problem free. Dad doesn't even use remote start since the car's garage kept, so that's really no big deal at all. I'm sure next time we go to the dealer, I can mention it to them. But um, really problem free ownership, and that's the way it should be. Um, the Japanese really make such an, such an awesome car. Um, next on my list is Dad really has no complaints with it. He says it feels very substantial compared to the Altima, which it should. It's about double the price. Um, he said it's more than adequate in the power department for him. Of course, almost 300 horsepower, 268 to be exact, going to the front wheels definitely will light up um, the wheels if you're not careful. So just go ahead and grip the steering wheel with both hands if you plant your foot. But other than that, no issues to report at all. Just if we get that remote start thing worked out at the dealer, maybe it's just a quick little reflash of some sort of component on the vehicle. But we'll go ahead and start it up, take a look at the window sticker and go on with a brief tour of it to show you how, how it's holding up. We'll go ahead and hop inside. Of course, smart key, so just go ahead and put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. As you can see, that mileage we're looking at 2158 miles. Foot on the brake, button to start. Your seat wheel auto recall, as well as your power telescoping steering wheel, power tilt and telescoping. 
And so let's go ahead and check out underneath the hood. Now coming underneath the hood, we do have the 2 Giara FE 3.5 liter V6 engine. Now this is definitely an antiquated engine. It's been around for over 10 years, actually. It was debuted in the 2017 Camry, and of course it was produced before that, and so um, it's definitely got some age on it. But um, if it's not broke, don't fix it, because this is such a great power plant. Um, it is uh, about 268 horsepower, 240 some odd pound foot of torque to the front wheels through a six speed automatic. Now, um, this power plant has been around quite a while, and so I wouldn't be surprised if it was replaced soon, maybe with a forced induction um, replacement, but I don't know. Um, the ES has always had V6s, so we'll see um, what goes from there. The LS has always had V8s up until recently, so they, um, uh, Lexus might throw us a curveball in terms of the power plant. But everything's been running like a top under here. They had nothing to report to us negatively when we went and had it serviced, so that's always good. They didn't find anything wrong with it. Um, and even if they did, we've got the warranty to fall back on. That's about it for underneath the hood. No rock chips or anything like that up front. I do kind of wish that we did get the 3M, um, what, what's it called, the, um, the clear bra, clear bra, that's what it is, um, to prevent rock chips later down the road. But of course, the radar assisted cruise control does prevent you from tailgating quite a, quite a lot. And um, so it definitely helps with rock chips since um, you're not riding up on people's bumpers a whole lot. We do have the dual LED headlights on the um, Lexus Safety Systems Plus models, our LED daytime running light and our LED fog light down there. Of course, dynamic radar cruise up right there. And then we do have our lane keep assist up in the um, rear view mirror behind there. Front parking sensors, if I didn't mention. Coming to our wheels, we are riding on Michelin Primacy MX V4 tires. And these are the wheels specifically for your navigation models. Um, the base models, you can get those base wheels with navigation. These are actually about a $40 option. And we'll take a look at that on the window sticker. But um, you can special order a navigation vehicle without these wheels if you're not a fan of them. I particularly really like them. And then we do have our turn signal indicators in our mirror as well as our blind spot monitoring. Sunroof up top. I do kind of wish we did have a panoramic roof, but of course um, we don't have an ultra luxury just because 50 grand for an ES is a little, little much. Coming around back, LED tail lights. Actually, your brake light, I noticed this during ownership. Your brake light is only these four LEDs in each light. Don't get me wrong, they're bright, but four LEDs is a little lacking in terms of um, getting people's attention. Definitely, they could have lined them all the way between those two light beams, but um, I guess no one has rear-ended us yet, so we'll see. Dual outlet exhaust down below, of course, as well. So we'll go ahead and hop in. Taking a look at our seat wear, my dad's about 200 pounds, and um, as you can see, looking at our seat, we do have some creasing over here, creasing right here, and that's normal since this is genuine leather. It is perforated, so as you can see, some salt and other crumbs stuck in the perforations right there. A quick vacuum job could get that out though. Um, seats are fully power, as you can see down there. Three person memory over here. And we do have the WeatherTech mats. That was a Christmas present for dad um, after he purchased the vehicle in 2015. So coming to your door panel, nice padded materials up top. As you remember, there was a little dimple over here in the Altima. That's actually not the case over here because it's actual um, premium materials. The Altima, it was padded, but of course it wasn't very substantial if it made a little divot where dad was resting his elbow. Right down here, nice padded stitched leather. Power windows, locks, mirrors are over here on the dash. Some door storage down below as well. As you can see, we do have our power mirrors. No power folding mirrors, that's actually overseas. You do get that option. Automatic high beams, parking sensors, blind spot monitoring, little felt line storage cubby right here with some coins in it. And then we do have our gas cap trunk and hood release, parking brake down there, and then panel dim, Odo trip reset, and then our power tilt and telescoping wheel. Speaking of that steering wheel, it is the wooden leather wrapped wheel. We do have our audio controls, Bluetooth, voice commands, as well as our four-way D-pad for that center LCD right there. Cruise control, as well as our radar cruise, so you can adjust your um, following distance, as well as your lane keep assist. 
Dad loves the safety tech in this vehicle. Everything besides the lane keep assist. It's a little too sensitive for him. I personally can handle it. He's um, he just more traditional and doesn't not a fan of it. Over here we do have the automatic wipers. They are variable intermittent speeds. And then over on the left, of course, our automatic LED headlights with fog lights. Dashboard's all a nice soft touch material. No gapping up there underneath the um, windshield glass or anything like that, which is thankful to see after one year with the Fusion, of course. It was basically like sagging like an inch. Um, remote touch interface. Dad specifically wanted me to mention how easy to use it is once you get used to it. He said the first week of ownership, he despised it. And just think all these reviewers that are hating on it are using the vehicle for maybe a week at most. And he's definitely not, um, he wasn't agreeing with the reviewers at all. He just loves the remote touch interface. And I'm really not BSing you on that. He really does enjoy this because um, you can basically keep your eyes on the ro road because you memorize all the buttons down here after a few months, of course. So he really does enjoy this. Um, I do kind of wish we did the premium Mark Levinson audio, but um, that's about a couple thousand dollar option, if I'm not mistaken. So um, we definitely didn't get that. We're not by no means audio files, and Dad just listened to like the coffee house station on satellite. But we do have our analog clock right here, very classy. We're gonna turn down the air conditioning. Um, some physical radio controls, and then down here our dual zone auto climate. He didn't have ventilated front seats. There are three stages for the driver and front passenger. Rear window shade. Okay, and we'll demonstrate that right there. That does go up and down quite fast. We do use that on the road trips and such. And then right here, this is where the heated steering wheel would be. That's definitely a must-have feature for the next vehicle that has um, a wood steering wheel, just because wood does get rather cold and rather hot. And so um, it's definitely conductive to temperatures. I'm not a fan of it. I would just rather have leather wrapped around the wheel. It gets greasy and fingerprinty. I'm just not a fan of a wood steering wheel. It does look nice though. Um, we do have a drive mode selector down here. You have cup holder right here. Gear shift with sport mode and manual shift. Cup holder down here. And of course you can put this right here. Close this up and show your wood grain right here. A nice padded armrest right here. It doesn't slide or adjust, but it doesn't really need to. It is in the perfect spot for you to rest your elbow and still be able to hold onto the wheel. But coming right here, we'll go ahead and check out our window sticker. As you can see, it is a 16 ES350 in Atomic Silver. Final assembly point was in Kentucky. It was actually delivered to um, Flow Lexus of Winston-Salem. It was a special order vehicle and um, was shipped over to our local Johnson Lexus dealer. As you can see, you can definitely pause right here and look at all the options. We do have blind spot monitoring, those 17 inch wheels, which is our $40 option. Lexus Safety Systems Plus, which actually does come included on most Lexus vehicles for 2017. You have the rear power sunshade, luxury package, which basically gets you all the um, keyless entry, linked memory, power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, heated ventilated seats, and of course the real leather. If you don't get that, you get like the Softex um, leatherette. Down here, we do have the navigation system, one touch power trunk, and some more just um, stuff like that, parking sensors, or rain sensing windshield wipers, wood and leather steering wheel, which was $300. Gosh, I, that is not worth $300 to me. Um, glove box right over here, as you can see, not very big at all, but it's, I won't, I won't harp on that too much. We do have a garage home link linked into the frameless rear view mirror, which I definitely do like. It is auto dimming, of course. Mirror and vanity light on your sun visor. The headliner is so premium in this vehicle, like a mouse fur material. It's very, very nice. By no means flimsy at all. You can't flex this. I'm literally like pushing in as much as I can. Very, very sturdy up here. This is a weak point in most vehicles. One complaint both my dad and I did have was there's no sunglass storage anywhere. Dad usually just ends up throwing his sunglasses here or in the center console, but um, it would have been nice to have seen this, um, this little thing rearranged so that there could have been some sunglass storage up here. We do have our LED interior illumination. Um, you just tap those right there and they do turn on. And then our sunroof right here. So I think that's definitely about it. Let's get this to stop blinking. <laughs> That's it for the front. We'll check out the rear seat. All right, so coming back here, 
Rear seat room is adequate. I mean, it's a family sedan, so coming back here, the seat is set for my five foot nine driving frame. As you can see, plenty of knee room, plenty of foot room down below for me to stretch out. We do have the WeatherTech mats down here as well. Dual seat mat pockets back here, and even the back of the seat right here is nice and padded. They could have easily cheaped down and made this hard plastic. I might even think some BMWs do have a hard plastic on the back of the seat, so it's nice to see this is padded. We do have rear AC vents right here, and even a 12 volt power outlet down below. Armrest right here, even the cup holder lid is nice and padded. We do have felt linings down there in the bottom, which is a nice touch. Little ski pass through right there. And then all three of your headrests are adjustable. And damped corning handles up top with co hooks and some LED illumination back here as well. As you can see, the roof does slope back up for some um, added rear headroom for your rear passengers. Door materials do follow through. I'll go ahead and show you that. Nice padding up top padded stitch leather right here and then um, we do have the piano black trim with your automatic up and down window little puddle light down below did i show you the trunk we'll go ahead and open up the trunk press this and it will as you can see power open coming back here plenty of room as you can see dad does use his trunk quite a lot for his work and down in there, just a little ski pass through. The seats don't fold. Quite common in the um, luxury sedan market. Now up top, nicely lined. We have our close button, emergency release, and grab handle if you want to manually close. This is one little nitpick. I hate how this side is covered for your power function, but this side is not. The arms are um, finished nicely though. You can't see any exposed wires or anything like that. And then of course we do have our cargo net right here and um, cargo mat. Below that, we do have a spare tire in this vehicle as well, but we've got roadside assistance. So we'll go ahead and close that up. And this vehicle has, or this video has gone on long enough. I will briefly tell you, we did do about a 600 mile road trip in the vehicle around Thanksgiving. Um, and it was a peach. It was the perfect road trip car. Just go ahead and set cruise at about 75 and roll down the interstate. We did go to Boone, North Carolina. I'll insert some pictures here of that. And um, it was perfect. I mean, four adult sized people in the car and we had plenty of room in the trunk. Um, about a six hour drive there. We did about 600 miles total and it was the perfect road trip companion. I'm so glad we drove this instead of the Commander. The Commander would probably still be in the mountains right now. But <laughs> um, anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this little one year review of the, um, the vehicle. Um, and that's it. I've, That'll conclude this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.